is an amazing, amazing gathering, right? Um, we're going to follow the rules, right? We've got about six to seven minutes each, so I'm going to do my best to keep within those rules, right? You know what folks are like when we start getting carried away, and then everything we tell everybody all the story about our life, right? Well, I'll stay within the six minutes. Funny enough, you talk about Blair Peach. I've got a collection um, that in the core of its collection, I've written 18 poems dedicated to people that have died in police custody, in prisons, and in the mental health. And funny enough, Blair Peach is in this collection. So I'll start off with that. Blair Peach, Peach. Sorry, Blair Peach, 1979. He stood up in the classroom of violence that spilled onto the streets of Southall. Playground for the bullies, police on foot, police on horseback, police heavy hand. And he's in the thick of it, this teacher from New Zealand. Separated from the protesters, he's sitting against the garden wall. Rescued, he slumped in a sofa in the front room of the Atwals. He's lying down in the back of an ambulance. He's dead in the theater, a casualty of hatefulness. Years later, his nephew is all grown up, shook at the sight of red shirt protesters of Bangkok. Lining the street as he views from his office above, he grabs the camera, flies down, and gets involved. On a, mo on a mobile, a father implores, I lost my brother to a demonstration. I don't want to lose my son to another. Thank you. Continue with this kind of thing about racism. You know, people take racism lightly. Racism leads to death. Whether it's genocide, murders, etc. And the worst one is, the, is when the cust uh, death's in custody. And I remember here in Wolverhampton, people will know of a guy named Clinton McCurvin. Back in 1987, I was walking through the town center when this happened. We moved through the city like a tide, surging through the shopping center, filling and filtering into different shops. We followed the flow and tasted the fear, heaviness in the air. The moving stream whispered along, and I heard they killed him. The stream swelled as it curved through the mall, they killed him. Could be clearly heard, and like a pool of water down their head, we tried to look above each other's heads. I heard with anger said, they killed them. Somewhere, somehow, inside of next, a man was held tight around his necks and then never let go of him until he was dead. They killed him. And like a swollen dam, a community stood still in disbelief, spilling and pouring into evenings of disturbances. They killed him. We wailed, we lamented, whilst a lone voice cried out in the midst of Wolverhampton, Babylon, kill him. Babylon, kill him. Babylon, I kill we off, and nobody no see. Okay. First time I'm going to be doing this one. Uh, this is from the selection at the back where I've got a whole selection called The Gospel According to Rasta. And I've got this guy, he's a Rasta like a guy. He's almost like, imagine Doctor Who with, with dreadlocks going through time and, and, and appearing at places like where things are going wrong. So this one's called Arms Outstretched. This raster, arms outstretched, chained to rocks, rough iron hold, him who dared to defy the gods, to break their grip, to question their stories, and sight something new, something beautiful that begins within and heals without. This raster, dreadlock Christ, hung on a tree, 
His blood run down across centuries from where the state took him up and the righteous stand up and watch him sweat, tears and life water flow to bless and heal beyond the borders of politics, hypocrites and murderers. For as much as you did unto them, you did unto me. This wrestler is the thousands of women beaten, arms outstretched, pleading for mercy before tied down to a drowning chair, the innocent that died by water, and those called witches survived to burn in fires, set by devils, wrapped in cloaks of man full of fear and a god that looked like them. This wrestler walked with Paul Vogel and hundreds more to Morant Bay to drive Bukra back to England. This wrestler fight with head, heart, rock stone and cutlass, but had to run as militia opened fire and cut them down like tear. This wrestler run and hide in the hills. 600 got whipped, whipped to the bone, and 400 more hang and fly away home. This wrestler is running from the hills with limbs harvested by Leopold and walking ghetto streets barefoot after crystal gnat wearing David's star. This wrestler rose from the oven ash of Holocaust, climbing from under the bones of genocide only to change garments with Palestinians. This wrestler is a shadow left on the playgrounds of Hiroshima arms outstretched against the red sky, running to waters filled with bodies, bloating horses and black rain, black rain, black rain everywhere. This wrestler is running, running for his life, her life, life, running from atrocity to atrocity. This wrestler is a child, dead, curled up on a beach, picked up by outstretched arms of a stranger. Thank you.